I've been building this speedboat for the last few weeks. It's a hydroplane that's propelled by air propellers, so it's actually an airboat, and it's designed to go as quickly as possible and maybe break a record or two. The hull is made from PVC, the sponsons or floats are made from wood, um, and we've got some 3D printed parts. And I'm going to be showing you exactly how I put this whole thing together uh, step by step. I've built a few different sea crafts on this channel before, each connected in some way to my main interest of DIY aerospace type projects. This sea craft is essentially a scaled up version of the hydroplane I built back in 2018. I'm interested in the way that boats like this use lift to plane across the surface of the water with minimum drag. Hydroplanes are able to go way, way faster than hydrofoils, like the couple I built back in January, as they skim along on three small contact points. Hydrofoils are inherently draggier as they use submerged underwater wings that usually have to displace far more water. One famous example of an extremely fast and successful hydroplane is Bluebird K7, a boat that set several world records and reached a top speed of over 300 miles an hour using a turbojet engine from a fighter jet. At such extreme speeds, hydroplanes have to ride a very fine line and have to be perfectly balanced to stay on the water and not take off entirely. So I wanted to build a craft of my own to ride this line and, with upgrades and tweaks, push towards greater and greater all-out straight line speed. I've decided to build an airboat to see how close I can get to the existing RC airboat record of 103 miles an hour, set by Dan Jones in 2016. This therefore is the first episode of an ongoing series, starting with the fundamentals such as checking to see that the thing actually floats. In a moment we're going to put it on the lake and see how it performs for the very first time, uh, but not before I show you how it was built. So uh, let's see how I put this whole thing together. To get started with my design, I used Fusion 360 to flesh out my sketches and turn them into an accurate 3D model. This was done to help me decide on the scale of the boat and a few key choices such as what the materials were going to be for each section of the boat. I decided to build the sponsons of the boat, the big lifty float things at the front, from wood, so I jumped into Adobe Illustrator to design them in 2D. These two dimensional parts were made to be locked together using tabs and slots. This would help to accelerate the build as I could assemble the pieces like a big leg Kit. I then cut my design on 3mm plywood using a laser cutter. But hold on a minute, how did I come up with this design in the first place? I largely based this new craft on the previous hydroplane, but massively scaled up the power and increased the dimensions a little bit. The theory with how this configuration with the airboat propellers work is that the high centre of thrust pushes the nose down and lifts the back end out of the water. The sponsons push back with their lift and keep everything nicely in equilibrium. As with the smaller first hydroplane, I went with a twin motor set up with these beastie 4258 motors. They should be capable of producing 1800 watts of power and many many kilograms of thrust each on a 6S LiPo when paired with these massive 16 inch props. The rear prop has a more aggressive pitch than the forward one. This is because it will be spinning in faster flowing air created by the first prop. Right then, now we know what we're building, onwards with the build. I used super glue to stick the sponsors together piece by piece. The tabs and slots drawn up earlier came in very useful here. I ordered a couple of 200mm diameter PVC pipes to use as the hull of the boat. They're tough and waterproof, but needed some reinforcement, so I made a frame for them. The PVC was a bit longer than I needed so I had to cut it to size. To do this I wrapped some masking tape around the tube and attacked it with a saw, taking my time to work around bit by bit until I had cut through. Now it was time to glue the hull together. Again I used gap filling super glue and some accelerator to bond the PVC halves together. Next I could glue the frame to the inside. Moving on to a slightly trickier bit, I used some basic maths to work out where the holes for some carbon booms needed to go before marking some paper and laying it over the hole.
These carbon booms were secured in place with epoxy whilst another hole was cut, this time for a 30mm motor pylon which was again made from carbon fibre. I cut some mounting bracket things from some more 3mm ply which could hold the pylon perfectly straight and firmly in position when all covered in some more epoxy. Returning to the sponsons, I finished them up by sheeting the tops and bottom with balsa wood before filling any gaps with filler and sanding it all smooth. To waterproof many of the parts on this boat, I decided to use aircraft dope, which is a form of varnish that can be applied, sanded, applied again, and basically entirely seals the wood. When I had them all nice and shiny, I took a drill to the sponsons to allow the carbon rods to pass through. In hindsight, I could have planned this all a bit better, but winging it to some extent meant I had less chance of getting the holes in the wrong places. I used my Ender 3 to print out a nose cone design that I'd whipped up in Fusion. For this, I experimented by using a setting called Vars Mode. Vars Mode prints a single outside layer of your model to radically speed up the print time. This nose cone only took 5 hours, however the nose was clearly not strong enough and had some strange warps due to cooling and contracting during printing. This meant I reverted to printing parts such as the tail in normal high speed modes. The tail took around 19 hours to print. After filling gaps, sanding and waterproofing with some more dope, I could attach this part to the hull. A simple motor mount was designed to bolt the motors to the motor pylon. Originally I wanted to design a fancy tilting one, which could be set at different thrust angles, but I didn't really have time to develop and fix one when it inevitably exploded into a million pieces. I made a tail skid from more plywood and waterproofed it. In the future I might modify this part so I can attach various different planing skids and perhaps even an experimental hybrid hydrofoil wing that can help lift the rear out of the water before becoming an air stabiliser but maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Another print later and I had a new V2 nose cone that was immensely strong. One of the last bits to do was the servo mount and rudder. I ended up rushing the rudder assembly a little as you'll see later on, so I will be revisiting this in a future video. But for the servo, all I needed to do was to make a little bracket to hold it in place. Before putting all the parts together in final assembly, I had to paint the hydroplane. Priming the entire thing with car body primer, I created an even base layer for the first coats of bright blue rust-oleum paint to bite into. A tip with this sort of thing is to take your time, do a fairly light coat at first and then build up with successive layers. I chose blue to capture some of that bluebird spirit and also give me an excuse to name this thing bluebird, just like Donald Campbell's. It's a bit pretentious giving it a name like this, but I suppose it would be quite cool if this bluebird did break a speed record of its own at some point. After a few layers, I could seal off the paint with some automotive lacquer. Going onto the home straight, I could bolt the motors to the motor mount blocks with some 3mm bolts and connect the ESCs. All of this is a bit messy for now but can be improved later on. A temporary battery mount was glued to the internal frame and positions for two batteries and a GPS speed unit were added with Velcro. Everything was pretty roughly taped on and Velcroed in place on the inside of the hull but there's plenty of room inside to get in there and move things around later. With that I could just about cram the hydroplane into my tiny hatchback and head to the lake for a first test float. That was close. <laughs> Almost knelt in the poo there. Are you filming? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great start to the test. The day is here. I'm going to uh, power up the boat, put it on the lake, and uh, yeah, lovely conditions. This would only be a simple buoyancy test with a bit of manoeuvring around just to see how the thing sat on the water. Speed was not the aim here, but of course, something still had to go wrong. The time is now. Let's do it. What do you think, Mike? You ready? The plan is. We're going to just stick it in the water, 
uh, obviously. <laughs> and then we're going to just um, keep it pretty close to the shore so that if it starts to sink or something, um, that I can just jump in and get it. Uh, whereas if it's in the middle of the lake and it starts sinking, it's game over. <laughs> Have your armbands? I've not. It takes a while for the propellers to stop. <laughs> so much inertia. I might get the wet foot here. Oh, God. Why did I do that? Well, it floats. That's good. Although I'm not sure if it's going to stay floating, that's the only thing. Shall I take it right back out again and see if anything's leaking? Yeah, maybe. So quick it's, check. Going, it's going to drip a bit, but there's no massive spurts of water, so that's a good sign. <laughs> That's promising. Right, okay. Exciting. Not very manoeuvrable. Hang on, what are you doing? It's <laughs> having to go again. <laughs> the rudder doesn't work very well. Rudder's fallen off. Ah. That's probably why. That doesn't sound good. Well, it might be a bit of a short test tonight, boys. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop it. Hmm, okay. The rudder, I didn't, this was the bit I was working on today and sort of rushed it, so. So clearly using glue <laughs> isn't a great way of um, connecting uh, a brass tube to some uh, to a brass rudder. Oh, let's just check if it's actually leaking. Hopefully not. That's a spurt. Oh yeah. Right, make a note of that. Yeah. Let's plug that later. <laughs> so obviously I'd found two issues to fix before the next test, but I still wanted to get a bit more footage for you viewers. As the boat had tracked fairly straight previously, I decided to point the boat at the other bank and let it go, just so it could get to the other side. Right, we'll just send it over there and then get some good shots of it. That's what you want to hear. Yeah. Just put, it back on the water. Just put it back on. However, as it turns out, the boat had a mind of its own. It's not gone towards the bank. Oh, I see. Shall I just carry on? And that was the second poor decision of the evening. Cruising towards the other side of the lake, I did get a chance to observe a planing issue. Perhaps this was because I was in the midpoint of the planing transition and I wasn't flooring it, only opening the throttle up a little. But it did make me think that maybe I needed a bigger tail skid. Reaching the other side, I hoped the boat would remain <laughs> pointing towards the shore for an easy recovery. <laughs> oh no, it's going the wrong way now. It's not a good time to have had a leak as well. It's a desperate father chasing his child. Got it. Huh. Thank God. Where are you? I thought. <laughs> I'm out here. Well, that was a bit of an adventure, wasn't it? Well, we've saved it. Um, yeah, thankfully it was pointing the right direction as I got over here, so I just powered it into the shore. <laughs> Alright, so obviously. There's some things to improve on the boat, like the rudder, and also I think there are a few issues with it planing, um, so the way that it was sat in the water. So we'll address that in the next video. As mentioned, we really need to address the planing issues with some mods and come back for some further testing when we can get the thing fully out of the water and riding the surface at increasing speeds. Despite this, I'm really pleased with the slow speed stability, the overall buoyancy and the lift of the floats. I think this boat has some real potential moving forward. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see me doing more on this boat and what your suggestions are for improvements. Click like if you enjoyed this video, if you like what I'm doing, and uh, obviously if you're not subscribed already, do that uh, if you'd like. Uh, and thank you very much to all of my Patreons who make things like this possible. I honestly wouldn't have been able to buy all these different components if it wasn't for your kind generosity. Cheers, see you on the next one.